Welcome to our webinar today on operating support grants for fiscal year 2020. I am Carolyn Casca, the Financial and Grants Administrator here at Southwest Minnesota Arts Council, or SMOC. Um, first, I'll just run down what we're going to talk about today. Um, I'll talk just a little bit about SMOC. We'll look at the guidelines for operating support grants. Uh, we'll go on to our website and show you what's available for you there, uh, take you into the grant system, look at the application, and then just go through what the whole grant process will be like for you. Um, I have everybody muted right now, so if you have a question, please just type it into that chat window on your screen, and I'll watch for those and try and answer it. And then at the end, I will open everything up and we can talk some more then too. So the Southwest Minnesota Arts Council, or SMOC, is a nonprofit organization committed to promoting and encouraging the development of the arts in the 18 counties of Southwest Minnesota by serving as a source of funds and technical services, which enable local organizations, educational institutions, and individuals to sponsor and create and promote the arts in their communities. So here is our region down in the corner. We are one of 11 regional arts councils covering the state of Minnesota. Our funding comes uh, mostly from the state of Minnesota through their um, general fund and also through the Arts and Cultural Heritage or Legacy Fund. We also receive money from the McKnight Foundation. Some things that we are committed to is supporting artists and arts organizations in creating, producing, and presenting high-quality arts activities, overcoming barriers to accessing high-quality arts activities, instilling the arts into the community and public life, supporting high-quality age-appropriate arts education for all ages to develop knowledge, skills, and understanding of the arts, and supporting events and activities that represent the diverse ethnic and cultural arts traditions of the region. So these are some things to keep in mind as you're considering your projects because they should um, support these commitments as well. Our operating su support grant program is intended to be able to strengthen and stabilize arts organizations that are located in and serve the people of this region and that demonstrate um, high artistic quality of programming and efficient management. The operating support grants are two-year grants um, and it just helps your organization to maintain itself. It can go towards programs and services, facilities, any other kinds of um, expenses you might have without having to um, come up with some sort of specific project or new program in order to get funding. Um, and this funding is the most effective for organizations that have buildings or rent a space or have a staff. And it is open to just arts organizations, which are organizations whose mission is focused primarily on the arts. And arts organizations are eligible to apply if that organization has been putting on programming during the past three years, um, have to have at least three years of programming, and they also need to have been um, a 501c3 organization for at least three years before applying. The organization also needs to have total annual expenses of less than $174,000. That is the threshold at which an organization is then able to apply to the State Arts Board for operating support. Also, the organization can't already be receiving operating support from another funder. We have two funding levels for this program. Level one for organizations whose average annual expenses are under $25,000. They can request up to 35% of that average for each of the two years of the grant. And then level two is for organizations 
with average expenses of 25,000 up to that uh, state arts board limit and they can request up to 15% of their annual expenses for each of the two years of the grant. Uh, the operating support funds can't be used as a match for other SMOC grants. And also when you receive operating support and you are applying for other project grants, those grants cannot include any operating type costs in the budgets during the same time as that operating support grant. So for instance, uh, organizations not receiving operating support might request for a percentage of their rent or utilities or staff person as part of a project grant. But when you re are receiving operating support, you could no longer do that. Some eligibility items. These are all not eligible for SMOC grants. Projects that don't have an art focus, activities of a for-profit project organization or business, educational projects within a school system, requiring artists to pay excessive fees, activities that take place outside of Minnesota. So even though um, you really have a lot of freedom what you can use this money on, it can't be anything that is taking place outside of Minnesota or um, mileage to bring somebody in Minnesota, things like that. Uh, also not eligible, activities that are not open to the public, activities for the religious socialization of the participants or audience, fundraising events. So um, in general, our grant funding should allow your projects or your yearly budget to break even and should not be spending money on um, fundraising through this. Uh, payments of debts incurred before the grant begins. As we mentioned before, grant funds being used to match another SMOT grant is not eligible, and neither are applicants with past due final reports. So this is just kind of an overview of some of those guidelines. It's a good idea to check both the program guidelines that are specific to operating support and our general grant guidelines that apply to all of our grants. Um, those are available on our website and I will show you where those are later today. Uh, you'll need to have a start date and an end date for your project. And the start date for an operating support grant is the beginning of the applicant's next fiscal year, no earlier than January 1st of 2020. And then your end date would be two years after your start date since it's a two-year grant um, or June 30th, 2020, whichever, or excuse me, 2022, whichever comes first. And then you'll need to submit a final report within 60 days after that project end date, but no later than August 30th, 2022. Um, if your fiscal year for your organization doesn't fit within those dates, please talk to us and we will see um, how we can make things work for you. Deadlines for our operating support program. There are two that you need to be aware of. First, September 18th is the deadline for um, a pre-submission of a two-year financial statement. You'll need to email that in to us and we'll take a look at that coming up. Um, and then your actual application is due October 16th. Uh, and you must complete that pre-application final statement in order to apply on the October 16th date. Um, also note that all applications through our system need to be submitted by 4.30 p.m. on that deadline date. The system will not allow you to submit after that time. Uh, one other note on deadlines, these grants being two-year grants are only offered every other year. So after these deadlines this fall, the next deadline will be fall of 2021 for fiscal years starting January 1st, 2022 or later.
As with all of our organization grants, you'll need to have a project director and an authorizing official for your operating support grant. And the project director is whoever is most directly responsible for this operating support. Um, it may be the grant writer, maybe not. Um, maybe your staff person. And then the authorizing official would be the president or treasurer or some other individual who has authorizing power for your organization. And the project director and the authorizing official cannot be the same person. Both those people will need to sign the application, the contract, and the final report. Are there any questions so far? I will just pause for a few minutes if there's anything you'd like to type into that chat window. Can you yes. hear me? Yes. Okay, suppose, uh, for example, in an organization like ours, over that two-year span, officers change. So you have a different president, and maybe they were the authorizing signature, or you have a different treasurer, or whatever. Do those names that are on the grant application sign off or do you accept the name of a new officer, a different officer? Um, when you do your interim report, you'll have a chance to adjust those names if you're if you know you're going to have different people for the second year of the two years. Okay, thank you. I haven't seen any other questions, so we're going to move over to the website and I'll show you where things are available there. Um, there's a couple of different places where you can log into the grant system, one on our homepage in this black box down here. Otherwise, um, there's a spot to log in under each grant page. So for instance, here on the operating support page, you have your apply now button. And this will just take you to the login for the system. So you can, even if you're not actually uh, applying, if you're just returning to the system, this will take you where you need to go. So available to you on our page for this grant program, we have the grant guidelines specifically for operating support along with the general grant guidelines that apply to all of the grant programs. Um, here's the form you'll need for that pre-application financial statement, and we'll come back and look at that in a second. Um, your application questions are available in an editable document if you'd like to do your draft in there first and then paste everything into the online application later, you can do that. Um, budget form is available here, although it is also within the application. This is the criteria that our reviewers will be using to evaluate your application. We also have a video tutorial for the online grant system. This is just pretty general. And then we have a more detailed grant system guide that is written. And we've got our important dates here. Um, again, the pre-application deadline, September 18th, and you'll email that form to us. And then the actual application deadline, October 16th. Um, so to start, we'll just take a look at the um, pre-application form that you'll need to fill out. Um, so this have, has um, columns for you to put in two completed years worth of financial information. So one would be the year that you have most recently completed, and then the year before that. Um, if you go over to the other tab, it's got descriptions for you of all of the line items. And then you'll just enter in the information it asks for, it will total for you. Um, and then down here, it's got what your eligible expenses are. It does take out 
any capital expenses and also the amount of operating support that you're already receiving when it's calculating your average expenses. Um, so up here, um, it'll grab those totals from where we just were, and then it will give you your average expenses. And then based on whether you are above or below 25,000, it'll calculate down here the maximum that you can request for each year. And then you'll type in the amount that you actually do want to request. So you would fill out this whole um, spreadsheet and email it to us by September 18th. You will also need to upload this into your application when you're ready to do that as well. Um, so now we're going to go into the grant system. Um, so this took you to your dashboard. If you are applying for the very first time, it'll take you directly to this apply page. All of the grants we have currently available are listed here, so you'll just need to scroll through and find the one that you need. Um, if you'd like, you can click on the preview to just take a look at the form without actually starting an application. Otherwise, you can click this apply button to get started. Um, I'll point out a couple of new things this year in the application. We've got um, Google Translate on the system. So if you'd like to look at the interface and the application in another language, you can do that. Um, this is another new button, Copy Previous Answers. Uh, it will you, give you a list of other applications that you've completed in the past and you'll choose one and from that one it will copy over any answers to questions that are the same between both of those applications. And then we have our new collaborate button and you can invite someone to work with you on the application. You'll just put in their email address here, choose the level of permission that you're giving them and then type a little message saying, can you fill out the section on audience numbers or something like that. Um, the person does not need to already have an account in the system. It will just ask them to create a password um, it, when they follow the email inviting them to log in. Um, they can choose later to set up a full account if they'd like to. Um, so starting into the application, your name of your project can just be operating support and the years that it covers. Um, the amount requested, you'll put in just the amount you're requesting per year, not the total amount for the two years. Um, and a reminder that the request should not be more than what we approved in the financial statement that you sent in. Um, then your start and end dates. Here again are links to those guidelines that we talked about and the application questions in the Word document. Um, a reminder that we do have kind of a big uh, character limit for most of our fields in case there's something that you just really need to say a lot about. But in general, please keep in mind that our grant reviewers are reading a lot of applications and so they really appreciate short, concise answers that do cover what was asked for you to provide, but keeping things brief is helpful. Um, again, here is a link to the score sheet or criteria that the reviewers will be using to score your application. So you'll be asked some questions about your organization in general, its mission, uh, brief history, and then describing the programs that you have. It also asks for um, 
average number of people served per type of event over the last three years. You'll also talk about what you do for publicity. This next section is all on your personnel. So you'll provide a list of your board of directors and then talk about um, how your board is structured, how long, uh, how often do they meet, how do you select new board members. Um, you'll need to provide the name and brief list of responsibilities of either the main staff person or if you don't have a staff person, who, um, whoever the president is, or if there's somebody else that is really um, responsible for the main activities of the organization. And then you would upload their resume here. The same for financial people, if it's a staff person or a board member or a contractor who is responsible for um, all of your financial information, and you would provide their resume there. Uh, some information about financial planning and um, who reviews your reports. Again, is that two-year financial statement. You can grab it from here and it reminds you to email it to us. Then after it's been approved, you can upload it into this spot here. Then you'll need to fill out your budget form for the two years that you're actually requesting funding for. We'll take a look at that budget. Maybe, there it is. Um, so you had already provided your two most recently completed years. Then in your budget, you'll give an estimate for where you think you'll end up this current year. And then for year one and year two of the funding period. Again, you've got the second tab here that explains um, what we're looking for in each of the line items. And we gave you some note space if you need to explain something a little more or if there's a big difference in, say, your rent expenses between the two years. Um, so for each year, you would start with the beginning cash that you have on hand, which would include whatever is currently in your checking, savings, etc. Um, so it'll calculate what your year-end balance was down here. So this number should then go up to the beginning cash for the next year and do that again for the second year. So make sure that those match. So once you finish filling that out, you can save that and upload it into your application. It'll bring up that window for you. Um, it asks you to provide some information about other financial support you're looking for for those years covered by the grant, along with history of grants from other funders. Um, we separately provide a history of grants that you've received from us to the reviewers. This next section is all about um, the artistic quality of your programs. So you'll talk about um, your process for making those artistic decisions um, and how you define um, artistic quality when you're going through that process. Then it's got a place for a bunch of work samples. You can either upload We've got several upload fields or put in um, website addresses. So this would be um, images, audio, video, written materials that all, whatever you think best um, represents the quality of the work that you do. This next section is all about um, you working with the community, um, talks about how are you meeting the needs of the community, um, 
looking at recognizing who are the underserved groups in your community. You'll need to list those here. And then what you do to reach out to or involve specifically at least one of those groups in your activities. So it should be more than just saying our activities are open to everyone. There should be specific things that you're doing to reach out to particular groups to allow them to participate. And some questions about how you provide access to those with various disabilities, adhering to um, the ADA, what kind of support you have received from your community. Then this next section is all on impact, um, asking how is this money going to help move your organization forward? What kind of impact will it have? We also want to know if you um, are anticipating any changes to your programming during this time. And then some estimated audience numbers. Also, how you um, will be able to maintain your organization if you are not able to receive an operating support grant. Our next section here is our outcome evaluation plan section, and this has changed for this year. This is a new format that has been being used across the state. Um, the State Arts Board and the Regional Arts Councils have these Minnesota Arts Goals that everyone is looking for working towards um, and to support those we're looking for your projects to meet um, at least one of these Minnesota arts outcomes. Um, for operating support you'll want to choose number six as your main outcome but you can choose uh, more than that if there are other ones that apply to the the work that you're going to be doing or to the way you've decided to spend these funds. So then for each of those numbered outcomes that you list here, you'll need to um, say what skill, knowledge, attitude, behavior will change as a result of this funding, who will be affected by that change, and then down here, how you plan to measure or prove um, that those changes have taken place. And there's an example here that shows you kind of how um, this new outcome process works. So they've got their project here, here's the outcome they chose, and um, they have two different groups that are being affected by that outcome, what the change will be, and then how they have decided to evaluate whether that change has taken place. Next is just the data collection section. Um, your answers here don't have any bearing on your application, just some information that we need to gather. Um, each of these view codes links will bring up the possible codes that you can choose from. So you'll just pick which one best fits your organization and enter that in here. Then you'll put in your information about your project director and authorizing official. You need to upload a copy of your uh, IRS determination letter about your 501c3 status. Um, we've got a place for you to mark who the grant writer is in case we have questions. Um, if it's not one of these people and you choose other, there, is there are fields here where you can put in the contact information for that person. And finally, the signature section. And just a reminder that this is a good place to use the collaborate button up at the top to allow people to sign the form. Uh, down at the bottom, we've got a few important buttons. This abandon request button, if you um, find it you've started in the wrong program, you can just abandon this one and get rid of it. Or if you started an extra one or something, um, and we've got your save application and this one when you're ready to submit 
keeping in mind that you will not be able to change anything after you submit your application. For the moment, we're going to save. And it will tell you when you do that all of the questions that you have yet to answer. To get back to your application, you just push continue. But for now, we're going to go back to our dashboard. So you'll see now here's the quest request that we just started, that application under active requests. Um, previous ones for your organization will be listed under your historical requests. Uh, to get back in to edit, you'll just find the edit application button. If you receive a grant, this will be the same place you'll come back to to access your contract and your final report. Uh, we'll jump back to our slides. Any questions again at this point? If you have some, just type into that chat window. Not seeing any questions coming through, I will move on. Oh, here is one. Uh, when it is time for signatures, um, and using the collaboration is a typed signature proper, I'm not sure um, what you're asking there, but it is an electronic signature, so all you will do is type your name into that box, but then um, the person who, whose name that needs to be will actually be be able to log in and do it themselves. Some tips for working on your application. It's a good idea to start early so you have time to gather everything you need, um, get any questions answered. Um, good to read all of those guidelines carefully, read each of the questions fully because some of them have multiple parts to make sure you answer each part of that. Um, as we mentioned before, it's great to keep your answers really clear and concise. Also good to assume that the grant reviewers don't know anything about your organization. We have um, panelists coming from around our entire region, so it's quite likely they may not have heard of your group. Um, also, they are not allowed to use any outside information when they're reviewing. They can only go by whatever you put in your application. So even if they have experience of your organization, um, they just have to go by what is in your application. Um, also good to have somebody proofread your application. Um, make sure your budget adds up, that you have correct start and end dates some things to keep in mind. I see another question has come through here. When you get other grants such as Exhibit, do you include all of that information in the financials? Um, yes, you would include all grants that you receive in your both that um, financial statement document and the budget. So if you know you're planning on asking for a grant for a particular program in the next couple of years, you would put that in your budget. So we're really looking for um, the complete picture of all of your financial activity that happens in one year. Um, we as SMOC staff are here to help you with your application. We don't have any say in the um, scoring and awarding process. So we're just here to help you. So feel free to give us a call to talk about your project before you start an application um, or contact us with any questions you have while you're working on it. Also, we can review your application before the deadline. Um, if you just let us know, um, I think I have almost everything together here. Can you take a look? And we can read through and let you know if there's something you're missing or a little different way to answer one of the questions. Um, so we can do that for sure up to two weeks before the deadline. Otherwise, after that, we can't guarantee that we are able to take a look at it. Um, how the whole process works once you submit your application. SMOC staff will review it for eligibility and completeness. And again, at that stage, if there's something important that you are missing, you'll have a 48-hour period of time to correct that. 
Um, then all of those applications go on to a panel of individuals from around our region. They will discuss and score the applications based on the criteria for this program, which we'll take a look at in a minute. And then <clears throat> finally, that information goes to the SMOC Board of Directors, who will approve funding based on the recommendations from that review panel. The criteria for this grant program include um, the artistic quality and your organization's excellence in its field, worth 15 points, 10 points for organizational stability and commitment to sound management, 10 points for your commitment to the community, and 10 points for the impact that these funds will have on your organization. Um, if you're awarded a grant, you will first complete a contract for the first year, year one. Um, you'll receive 100% of the year one grant funds at the start of your first fiscal year. And all of those year one funds do need to be spent out by the end of the first year. Um, then after your interim report is approved, and you complete a year two grant contract, then you'll receive 100% of your year two grant funds. And again, those year two funds need to all be expended by the end of that second fiscal year. So that your interim report is due no later than 60 days after the end of year one or August 30th, 2021, whichever comes first. And then your final report is due 60 days after the end of year two, or August 30th, 2022. It's a good idea um, once you've completed your contract to go in and take a look at the reports um, when your, pro your year is just starting, so you know what kind of information you'll need to gather during the year. You'll need to acknowledge um, the operating support grant with a credit line that'll be included in your grant contract. Um, so you'll probably want to post somewhere in your building or venue that you receive operating support through and then the credit line that we give you. Um, it doesn't need to be on everything, just the things that seem to, to make sense. Um, if you have a project grant during that time, just use the credit line for that project grant. You don't need to also put the credit line for the operating support on that. Um, and all of the credit posters, credit lines, logos will be sent to you and are also available on, your web, on our website. So you won't need to try to figure out where to track those down. We are here in our office Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Sometimes uh, we're not here over the lunch hour, so good to check before dropping by. Um, otherwise, you can also contact us by phone or email. Um, I will unmute everybody now, so if there's any other questions that you want to ask. Having uh, attended a portion of that recent summit that was at the library, mm -hmm. we came away with a pretty firm belief that writing into our grants diversity and inclusivity is going to be very important, more so than ever in the past. Is that true? Yes, definitely. Okay. Do you have any suggestions for key words that <laughs> we should uh, use into our uh, language? I don't know that it's really certain words that we're looking for. We're really looking for, one, are you aware of um, the groups in your community that may be underserved or underrepresented? Can you come up with um, who that might be? And two, um, just what are you doing to reach those people and get them involved in your programming? Okay. So it's not really specific wording that we're looking for. We're just wanting to see that uh, an effort is being made in that okay. direction. 
Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Would uh, another thing, uh, having seen Smock's new um, statement on equality and diversity, mm -hmm. would it have any bearing on an application if we did or did not have one ourselves? Um, not necessarily, as long as the, I don't know, actions are there. I don't think it makes a difference whether you have an official statement or not, but you're certainly welcome to develop one. I don't believe there's a place to really provide that in the application, but if you have one, you can mention that you have it. Um, but I think um, the sort of concrete actions that you're doing are more important than mentioning that you have this document. Okay, thank you. Other questions? Well, it sounds like we've answered the questions you have today. If you run into something else, just give us a call or send us an email. And thanks for joining us today.